This is Isabel from Cognito Forms, and in this video, I'll show you how to set quantity limits. I'll go over exactly which field types allow quantity limits, and I'll also show you a few special cases where they work a bit differently. Then we'll look at some common scenarios, starting from the simplest to the most complex. First, I'll show you how to prevent duplicate entries for a specific field. Then, I'll show you how to limit your total form entries. We'll also look at how to limit the number of attendees for an event, and how to limit the number of coupon codes that can be used on an order form. And lastly, we'll look at how to effectively manage a product inventory when selling items through an order form. In this example, I'll show you how to set different quantity limits for each product, and how to automatically update inventory levels as items are sold. All of these examples are saved as templates, so if you want to copy them, you can find them linked in the YouTube description. So to begin, let's look at where we can apply quantity limits. You can set quantity limits for a single line text box, a choice field that uses drop down or radio buttons, a yes no field, a date time field, email, phone, or website, and a calculation set as either text, yes no, date or time. For the most part, this feature looks and functions exactly the same on all these field types, but there are a couple of exceptions. The first being choice fields. For choice fields set to radio buttons or drop down types, you set quantity limits by selecting limit quantities from the choice options in the field settings. Then you can set a custom quantity for each option. If you leave a quantity blank, quantity limits are not enforced for that choice option. Whenever quantity limits are exceeded, the default error message will appear, unless you enter your own custom error message here. One important thing to note is that changing a choice option label, like product one, will reset the quantity available for that choice option. Another exception is yes no fields. For yes no fields, quantity limits only apply to yes responses. This is useful for registration forms or other scenarios where people can opt into an event with a limited number of spots. Now that we've established where you can use quantity limits, let's look at a scenario where you'd want to prevent duplicate entries on a specific field. For example, let's say you have a form that collects email addresses for a newsletter signup. To prevent email addresses from being entered more than once, all you have to do is click on the email field, then go to the field settings and select no duplicates. While you probably wouldn't need to do it in this example, it's worth noting that you could also set a specific quantity, such as 2 or even 200. Once you select that, you can set a message to display when an email has already been entered. Now if I try to enter the same email twice, I'll see an error message. Instead of limiting quantities for a specific field, you may want to limit total entries for a form. If you wanted to limit total form submissions to 150, you'd add a hidden calculation field with a static value, such as a word, and set the quantity limit to 150. Now the form won't allow more than 150 submissions with that static value. To show a more complex example, let's check out the Time Slot Limits template. This template restricts the number of people who can sign up for a specific class on a specific date. The calculation field here combines the class and date values to a unique string behind the scenes. Setting the quantity limit for this field to 20 ensures that each class-date combo can only be selected 20 times. You can also use calculations to set different limits based on class type. For instance, you could set the limit for yoga to 15, Zumba to 17, and Pilates to 20. You could use a similar equation to display conditional error messages depending on which class is selected. While we're on the topic of calculations, there are a couple of special calculation properties you can access with quantity limits. Let's check out an example of this in the limited use discount codes template. This template is a basic sales form that applies a discount depending on which coupon code a customer enters. 
If we look at the limit quantity option for the discount code field, you'll see an if-then statement similar to the one I showed with the class time slots example. However, in this case, it limits the quantity so that each discount code can only be used a certain number of times. For the custom error option, I've set an error message to appear when the discount code is filled out, but the quantity limit isn't. This means that the discount code was incorrect and the quantity limit did not update. In addition to the quantity limit, you can also reference quantity used and quantity remaining. The quantity used is the number of times the current field value has been selected. The quantity remaining is the difference between the quantity limit and the quantity used. One last thing to note is that these quantity limit calculation properties reflect the values at the time the entry was submitted. They will only update when the entry itself is updated. This lets you track what the quantity limit was at the moment of submission, even if the limit is changed later. For our last example, I'll show you an efficient way to manage inventory with selling items through an order form. In this case, you'll need two separate forms. The first is your order form, and the second is an inventory form, which stores information on the items you sell. If you're already using an order form and you're struggling to effectively manage your product inventory, I highly recommend copying my templates to your organization and then importing your own data. But if you'd like to use your own custom forms, you can still continue watching and learn how to effectively manage quantity limits. To take advantage of these templates, you can find them linked in the YouTube description. Once you open the link and find the order form with connected inventory, click the orange Use This Template button. When you click save, you'll be taken to the order form. If you visit the public link at this time, you'll see that the order form is unavailable and there's a message stating that all products are sold out. This is happening because there aren't any product details entered on the inventory form. To fix this, go to the inventory form and enter your product details. This particular inventory form collects the name of the item, its price, how much available quantity there is, and the maximum amount a customer can purchase at one time. You can add more fields here based on your use case, but do not delete any of these required fields. They're used in some critical calculations on the order form, which we'll look at later. For the sake of time, I've already added some data here, but I'll add one more item so you can see how it works. For this example, I'll add an apple pie priced at $10. Let's say I made 10 fresh apple pies this morning, and I'm going to allow customers to buy all 10 apple pies at once if they want. Now if we go back to the order form's public link, you'll see that the product inventory is showing up, and the customer can see exactly how many they're permitted to buy. If I submit an order for all 10 apple pies, your inventory will update automatically, taking the total number of available pies to zero. And if we refresh the order form, you'll notice the apple pie no longer shows up as an option because there aren't any left in the inventory. One very important thing to know about inventory and quantity limits is that deleting entries will add back the inventory that was previously subtracted. So as a general practice, I recommend that you do not delete any entries from your order form unless you are absolutely certain that the items entered were not actually fulfilled. But if you ever get into a situation where your product inventory details are accurate, you can always go back to your inventory form and update the details there. And you can always check the activity log for an entry to see what changes were made and when. Now that you've seen how the order form functions, let's take a quick look at the build page to see how it's set up. The order form is linked to the inventory form using a lookup field. If you scroll down in the lookup field settings, you'll see that the limit quantity option is selected. Below that, there's a drop down menu labeled quantity available. Here you'll select the field from the inventory form that tracks how many items are in stock. It's important to note that the limit quantity setting works in tandem with the specify quantity setting. Specify quantity refers to how many units the customer is ordering, which is this field right here. You'll need to use both of these settings to automatically update your inventory when an order is placed. In addition to the lookup field, you'll notice I've added some other fields to further automate this form. The limit calculation field ensures that the customer can never order more than you have in stock. 
That number appears in the help text of the quantity field so customers can make informed purchases. This lookup field ensures that out-of-stock products aren't listed as options. And this calculation field calculates the total amount of inventory in stock. If we go into the workflow tab and then open the public links section, we'll see that calculation is used to disable the form when all items are sold out. That's all we're going to cover in this video, but if you're unsure of how to apply quantity limits to your specific use case, you can find more information in our user guides, and you can always reach out to us directly by submitting a support request.